Another one done. wearing my writing gear. Huh. That gives me an idea though. So I'm starting off with two pieces of styrofoam with a relief cut out in the center just to form the basic shape. A lot of dirt bike trails I grew up riding on had a lot of river washes that ran through them with trails that would bisect it. So I wanted to recreate that. I wanted to use a heat gun this time to make the relief for the trail and give the bottom of the wash a little bit more texture. I then gave it a quick foam core border I normally would prefer to use balsa wood, but I didn't have any and foam cores worked for me in the past. So with that done, I then moved on to applying some, some plaster rocks and I simply just hot glued them to the foam core. I wanted this little rock section to be this little truncated mountain that had a mine in it. With the rocks glued in place, I then wanted to clean up the look, so I snapped off the ends. Moving on from there, I wanted to now apply the ground texture. And for that, I used my own homemade sculptable mix, which is just blended up attic insulation, mixed with a little bit of plaster of Paris, and then just applied wherever you want ground texture. Once I was finished applying all the ground texture, I realized I needed to make an opening for the mine that I referenced earlier. And to do that, I just used an oscillating tool. I totally didn't use that to cut the ends flush. I snapped my fingers. You saw in the video, there's, there's no proof. With the mine opening now fixed and the ground texture still wet, I went on to adding tire marks through the sand wash. To do that, I just used ready-made spackling and added some water and spread it as thin as possible. And then with a wet end of a paintbrush, I dragged it through the speckling to create those tire impressions. Happy with the marks, I then took it outside to dry. One of the many benefits of living in a desert, where going outside feels like the sun is trying to murder you. With it now dry, I moved on to painting the rocks. I decided to go with a darker brown as the base color. With the base color dry, I then moved on to applying a black wash. followed up with light dry brushings of a lighter brown color. With the first pass of the rocks done, I then moved on to coloring the ground so I could apply the dirt texture. This was done with a light beige color, and again, the main purpose for this is to prevent any white from showing through any spots where the dirt doesn't actually touch. And then for actually applying the dirt texture, I used Luke Towen's method, which is just applying some watered down Mod Podge, or actually straight up Mod Podge in certain instances, straight onto the base and then applied via a stocking and a paint can lid until you get the kind of coverage that you're looking for. With the glue still wet in spots, I then added a few rocks here and there. With the ground texture now dry, I then moved on to painting. At this point, I was running low on some paint thinners and some of my paint, so I just I didn't want to go the route of painting it all black and having to paint all the colors in, so I just ended up using some of the natural colors and added some variation to help highlight and, and add some more contrast first color being desert yellow. I then moved on to using buff to lighten and highlight certain areas. After applying the colors, I then moved and focused my attention onto the mine entrance. I followed Luke Towen's technique for making a wood stain using vinegar and steel wool, and then used that to stain some square dowels, which I then just broke and kind of eyeballed and honestly just pressed into place. No glue was actually used to make the reinforcements of that mine entrance. Happy with the mine entrance, I then moved back to the wash. I wanted it a little bit lighter. Oftentimes in the desert, these washes are very light in color. So I broke out some AK enamels dust effects and I got to work. And then to help push that contrast even further, I grabbed a brush and I did a quick dry brushing of just pure white, just on the most extreme raised edges to emphasize all those track marks that we made earlier. Setting the base aside to dry, I then moved on to painting the figure and a dirt bike. Really wouldn't be a dirt bike diorama unless there was one in there, so 
So I did a quick and dirty paint job on the figure, kind of representing my own writing here. Don't look too closely at the helmet. I had to kit bash this figure together because I couldn't find a generic dirt bike rider. Who would have guessed? But then again, a Halo Spartan dirt bike helmet might be a really cool idea. Microsoft, I expect royalties. After finishing the figure and the dirt bike, I moved on to scratch building a power pole. For those of you who've ridden out in the desert, you would know, but for those who haven't, power poles and power line trails are very common, out, especially in the Southern California desert. They're very often used as navigation points or at least trails to ride on. So at least for me, this has to be included in this diorama. I really didn't follow too much of a scale, to be honest. I kind of just eyeballed how I wanted it to look, and once I was happy with it, I was happy with it. I stained the wood using the same process as I did with the mine entrance. And because I like to wait extra long, I used PVA glue to hold everything together. And then for the wire insulators, I just 3D printed some. I then moved on to applying some of the grasses and some of the vegetation and plants. One of the big plants in the Southern California desert, Nevada area, even parts of Arizona, is, is the Joshua trees. These are very distinct looking trees and are pretty unique. So I wanted to capture that. So I did what most people do, and I went straight to YouTube to see if there was a tutorial on how to make these, because I had no idea how I was going to do it. Luckily, I came across the channel Paper Cuts? Pay e -er cuts Pepper Cuts? Regardless of however you say it. His tutorial on how to make them were fantastic, and I'm really honestly quite happy with how they turned out, so couldn't recommend them enough. So after placing the rest of the Joshua trees, I then moved on to drilling a hole and prepping for the power pole to be put in. Much like the rest of the Joshua trees, I just used some PVA glue and placed them in. I didn't show it, but I also blended the power pole in a little bit better with some dirt I applied around the base just to emphasize some build up around it. I then glued the figure to the dirt bike I think the dirt bike and the uh, the figure came out pretty well. Again, not bad for being all kit bashed and just thrown together. So I just affixed it to the base using some more PVA glue. For the power lines, I ended up using floral wire. I tried super gluing them at first, but they were just drooping too much. So I ended up wrapping them around the insulators. It looks pretty good. I then gave them a gray coat of paint. Off camera, I ended up adding more vegetation and then I wanted to add a little bit more color variation. So I added some red flowers to the tops of some of the green grass tufts. For the flowers themselves, I used a product from Woodland Scenics called Fall Foliage. But there's a bunch of other more budget friendly ways of adding flowers. Like there's a uh, tutorial from Dart Side Scenics who uses crayons actually, which blew my mind the first time I saw that. I ended up going back with the airbrush and cleaning up some of the banks of the wash as well. And it was at this point I realized I wanted to add trail markers, another very common thing you see out in the desert. So I whipped those up and painted them a reddish brown color. With that last detail finished, I painted the sides black and I called it good. So yeah, another one in the books. This project ended up taking way longer than I had wanted it to. I'm not gonna bore you guys with any excuses. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.